Hello, hello everyone. Today I will be featuring a destroyer, uh, one of the newer destroyers to the game, the German Z-52, the tier 10 German destroyer. The matchmaking isn't exactly that kind to me. The enemy has four DDs, three tier 10s and a Yugumo, and they have two radars as well, the Des Moines and Donskoy, which are among two of the worst radars to face. The Moines radar is of course a huge pain, uh, because it has such long duration, especially on a map like this where um, you, it can use a lot of terrain to get into these nasty positions and of course radar in World of Warships works through all terrain which means they, uh, the, the, uh, these cruisers can easily hide behind islands and just radar you and get you killed and of course all the DDs can be an issue. Now first things first, I spawn at B so naturally I push towards B that's, uh, well, it's domination, so getting the caps first is quite important. But I get RPF located. You see the small icon popping up uh, on the right, top right side of my screen? Located. That means I'm, I am RPF located. So that makes me uh, already, well, it gives me the idea that someone is probably pushing this cap. Didi is pushing this cap to capture it. I can use RPF. You see, if I look on the minimap, I can see there's a Kagero going into A, or Kagero going into A, and a Shimakaze going into C. If this DD was on, on either of those caps, those would be the DDs that are RPF located. However, since I'm the one that's being RPF located, that tells me that the DD is in fact going to my cap. So what I do here is I intentionally park behind the island, because the Z-52 doesn't have that good of a concealment. The concealment is 6.1 which means you get outspotted by most of the other destroyers in the game. So what I do is I hide behind the island to allow him to push into the cap. Because the Z-52 has a unique tool that makes it especially strong, and that is of course Hydroacoustic Surge, which allows it to spot through smokes and spot people at the 5.9 km uh, duration, or dis distance that is. So I pop my speed boost to get around the corner, and I get spotted. And the gearing is here. So one of the DDs I was hoping to trap in my ambush like this is the gearing. One of their strongest chips. So I pop my spoke. I pop my hydro. He can no longer see me. I can see him. And you might notice that I am shooting AP. The Des Moines does radar. But you might notice that unlike many other DDs in the game that shoot HE on DDs, I'm shooting pure AP. And that's because on thick ships like the gearing, your AP actually has time to arm. And, of course, the Z-52 AP is extremely strong against destroyers. I don't manage to get the kill. I reverse behind the island to make sure the Des Moines can't shoot me, uh, even though his radar might have allowed him to. And you saw just how much damage. I did 18,000 damage to that gearing. I sadly didn't get the kill, but that's a gearing dead. And that right there is why the Z-52 is the strongest single knife fighting DDD, especially DD, especially when it comes to contesting capture points. Um, it's very hard to counterplay this. You really can't. If a Z-52 pushes a cap, your best decision as any other destroyer in the game is to run. Just turn away and flee, because you cannot fight him. He smokes up like I do here, and he pops hydro like I do here, and he can see you, he can see your torps, and you cannot see him. So you gotta give it up, you gotta just bail and flee. However, of course, I'm not able to get this camp because of this Des Moines sitting here uh, in hiding. So I just drop torps this way and I disengage. The reason, of course, I can sail around in the open like this and uh, this close to him is because he used this radar earlier. So I know I got a bit of a leeway uh, some time before I can do something. Now, I kind of really want to get this guy killed. I'm hoping we could maybe get the Kurforce. There's Kurforce right behind me who should have firing angles on this dude. I'm hoping the Kurforce will nail him because getting rid of this guy would be really useful. I'm hoping to bait him into sailing into my torps. Um, I launched torps and then I kind of cut it, sailed around in the open shooting at him. The idea was that he would get tempted into pushing out to kill me. But uh, he didn't take the bait and he just reversed. And now I have a Minotaur who's charging a Des Moines. I doubt I have to explain to you guys how much of a bad decision making that, or how much of a bad decision that is. If you watch my cruiser comparison, there is, uh, there's a certain like rock paper scissors thing going on with cruisers, and 99 times out of 10, the Des Moines will absolutely annihilate the Minotaur. And well, that's exactly what happened. The Minotaur gave a bunch of broadside to him as well, so. Our Minotaur basically threw away his life right there. Instant death. 
So we're gonna have some issues getting that B cap. So I'm gonna see if I can maybe do something at A instead, maybe harass their Conqueror, because the Conqueror is a hugely powerful, strong uh, new ship in the game, and getting rid of him would be very helpful. Problem is though, I get spotted here. And this is very nasty because uh, uh, there's a Yugono spotting me and he outspots me. He has 5.5, 5.4 game concealment and he's in a division with this Donskoy. So that's why I'm, I'm continually sailing away. I'm, ex I'm expecting this Donskoy to radar. So I'm kind of shooting and baiting. I shot him a bit to make, make him maybe pop that radar. I'm hoping he will pop it. I do land a Torp on the, uh, on the Conqueror. And sadly the Donskoy does not pop his radar. Uh, it might be on cooldown because he used it earlier. Regardless though, I have to disengage. I can't use my smoke to deal damage, it's too risky. Uh, not just because uh, I don't have my Hydro up right now, um, so I might get torped, but more importantly, uh, never ever smoke up near a radar cruiser or any sort of radar ship if you're uncertain of what his radar timing is. Uh, yeah, At this point I am a bit amazed because we have already lost three of our tier 10s and some of them to these really, really strange moves, including this Minotaur who decided to rush uh, tier 10 Des Moines. I am pretty amazed because, well, this is tier 10. You should by now know that uh, there are certain types of ships you do and do not rush, and that was a good example of things you do not rush. Our Ognavoy is picking a gunfight with the Des Moines? Okay. Uh, this, is going, this is turning into a very hard game right now. This is turning into, honestly, a challenge to turn this ship around. Uh, luckily though, the enemy team is getting a bit too cocky here, and they are pushing through uh, the sea cap with two battleship, it battleships. It looks like they have a DD with them, but this is something I can punish. The DD does in fact get killed by Shimakaza, so now these uh, Terpits and this Bismarck, they are without scouting. And if there's something the Z-52 is especially good at punishing, it's ships that don't have scouting helping them. Um, note that I keep an eye out on the Des Moines the, the entire time because I want to move out of his radar uh, range while I'm harassing these two. You might note that the torpedo reload is incredibly fast on this thing. Uh, even without um, any sort of AR kicking in, the torpedo reload is uh, 69 seconds, I think. You only launch 8 torpedoes, and these torps only deal 14.4k damage, but having a 1 minute uh, 9 second reload on these torpedoes is absolutely amazing, because it allows you to score flooding uh, on targets just by using your default reload. You don't even have to time it, just constantly spamming torps. If you land twice in a row, you will get flooding like that guy there experienced. And with AR kicking in, you see the reload is actually around 1 minute 4 seconds, 1 minute 3 seconds. So every one minute I'm launching these torps, and they are very fast, 69 knots. Uh, they have 1.4 km concealment, which means they are quite stealthy. So these are as fast as Shima torps, stealthier than Shima torps. They of course deal nowhere near the damage, and uh, they don't have the same amount, but they are this huge, huge threat to the enemy. Now, the Shima behind me is saying, Z52 big da, I think he wants me out of the way, so okay, I pop full speed and I accelerate to make sure that he won't have any issues. And he tried to launch some torps on the guy who was already dead, I don't get it. He's obviously, like, were those guys aimed at him? I'm, I'm confused. I'm, I'm a bit confused by what they said, uh, this uh, Shima is doing. Those torps looked really weird, and I'm gonna keep an eye out on this guy because he seems a bit strange. We are down to a 5 versus 5, and he tries to intentionally team kill me. That was a direct team kill attempt, and if I hadn't kept an eye out for this guy, I would have gotten killed by him there. And you can see he was quite intentionally trying to team kill me with those torps. So, uh, as far as from, from my limited uh, German understanding, um, what basically what happened there is that this guy sailed up behind me and uh, instead of like changing course or changing speed or whatever uh, instead of sailing around me to get uh, the ability to torp he instead sailed behind me and got mad at me for being in his way even though he was kind of putting me in his way and 
in return, instead of taking any responsibility for this, he blindly blames me to the point that he actually tries to team kill me, which is, well, a bit uh, special. But then again, World Warships does have a lot of special players. I did look up his stats and before he hid his stats, he had the usual 40% win rate in high tier ships, so you can draw your own conclusions about what kind of quality of player he is. I get spotted by the Des Moines. Uh, sorry, I get spotted by the Yuguma there, and since I'm already spotted and I know the Demon is going to be shooting at me, I see no point in not opening fire right back at him as I close the distance and get behind the island. So, dealing some damage to him, because he will be dealing a lot of damage to me in return. Uh, I figured it, it, was worth, it was worth it because I was going to eat this damage regardless. And I do manage to land a torp on him as well. I, I, I of course launched preemptive torps and kind of baited him into them. Uh, that's a quite a common thing. If you see a cruiser behind an island, you, lo you, la you launch torps around the island and then you start shooting. The cruiser goes, hey, there's a DD, I can pop out and I can kill him. And then he kind of sails out into your torpedoes. And uh, it can work, but it can also backfire. Now though, I finally have my Hydra ready for this goddamn Yugoma who's been spotting me so many times. In fact, all the HP I've lost has been because of this Yugoma spotting me at all the times when I don't have my Hydra ready. Now I finally do have my Hydra ready and of course you can see the kind of damage I'm dealing. I'm using AP on him and you can see the penetration damage and the DPM thanks to AR. He starts firing back, so I pop my smoke and I'm invisible now. He does angle in though. Well, his engine is broken and it's angling in. It's one of, I think this is one of the special snowflakes Yugomos that don't use last stand, which is of course stupid. I switch to HE, but it's too late, someone else gets the kill from behind me. Just like with the gearing, I'm unable to finish the kill at the very last moment. There comes the Des Moines radar, uh, but he's reacting far too late, and I am already actively disengaging and sailing away, and I manage to create enough distance, I think, to leave his radar range. And I do. The Conqueror is still alive though, and I gotta watch out for those shells coming in from the Conqueror. There they, sh there they come. One of those shells is enough to kill me, of course, because the HE is so incredibly powerful. So, what looked like a pretty lost game is now slowly, slowly, very slowly being turned around. Uh, I don't know what my Shimakaza is doing, the guy who tried to team kill me. He's trying to torp from our, like, our A line. I assume he's running 20km torps or something. I don't know. It's people, people who do stuff like that are not really that easy to read because they do a lot of dumb stuff. The Gross Gurfust has no idea about my torps coming his way. Uh, he might have spotted the Shima 20, uh, 20km torps and turned away from them or something similar, but in return he eats my torps and he eats a flooding as well. So that's probably going to be a pretty easy and quick kill. And you can see my I just killed the guy with my torps and my torps are already ready. This is what it looks like when you have full AR kicking in. Adrenaline rush, of course, reduces your reload based on the percentage of HP you have lost or the percentage of HP you have left and considering I've lost almost all my HP 55 second torpedo reload 55 second torpedo reload on a tier 10 that's so insane it's you're firing these volleys of torps more often than every minute and that's the, that's the issue with or that's the huge threat of the Z-52 if you deal a lot of damage to him but you fail to take him down, you fail to kill him, then you're left with this huge goddamn threat who's going to be launching torps at you every minute. And these torps have 10.5 km range, 69 knots of speed, and even though they don't deal that much damage, that's still going to be breaking your engine, your rudder, they're going to be causing flooding, and the damage isn't exactly nice to deal with either. So, you see, I just hit the Conqueror, he's prob probably popped his damage gun now, he's repairing that flooding and so forth, he's got his heal active, and my torpedoes are already almost ready. So, people underestimate how much of an insane torpedo threat the Z-52 is. It's of course for this reason that I build my Z-52 as a torpedo boat, not a gunboat. Even though it has these great guns and you saw how much, how strong they are, you don't need to build this ship as a gunboat because when you have both your hydro and your smoke ready, you can take on any other DD in a camp. You don't need a gun build to be able to do this. Now I pop my smoke to harass this demon because he's reversing away. I want him to stop reversing and being forced to push in. Sadly my range is just too short that I'll be able to kill him. You of course see the damage you do is really good, but he's just barely outside of my range and I can't hit him. But that's not too big of a deal because my primary goal was mostly to harass him and 
basically wait until my torpedoes reach this conqueror who has of course used his repair so that's a permanent flooding on him and uh, with this little health left and he already used his super heal earlier in response to the torp c8 he is obviously quite dead if i'd gotten the two dd kills the gearing and the yugomo i would of course have my kraken now but hey you can't have a, you can't have everything and overall i'm just happy that this game is turning out to be a victory considering um all the really strange moves that my uh, tier tens on my teams did like the minotaur suiciding and the shimakasa trying to kill me and you know uh, Every day I feel like the player base gets more potato in this in this game. Some some days it's better, but sometimes you have games like this where you where you literally walk around scratching your head wondering am I the only sane player left in this game? The Des Moines is slowly sneaking forward. Now I try to maintain a certain distance. Um, Des Moines I think has a radar range of is it 10, 9.9? something like yeah, I think it's 9.9 .9. I do shoot at him briefly but that's just as I'm uh, going behind the island so there's no chance of me actually being spotted I try to bait the radar out of him in this case uh, because I know he has 9.9 .9 game radar range so if he does pop radar I want to be able to be outside of that range and not get caught in it um, I'm really tempted to fire I could maybe kill him before he has time to turn his guns and shoot me but I'm not gonna risk leaving uh, winning this game in the hands of the Samagi or the Shimakaza because I have no idea what they might do. At this point uh, I'm pretty convinced that in order to win this game I'm gonna have to hard carry it across. Well even with one dude left with 3.8k I'm taking no risks at this point so I'm playing it super safe. I'm just gonna spot this Des Moines so when our Amagi uh, comes around this corner he'll be able to shoot the Des Moines before the Des Moines can shoot him simply because I am actively out spotting him. In this game, of course, if your target is spotted as you come around the corner, you are able to shoot him before he is able to shoot you, because it takes a few seconds for your ship to render on his screen before he can actually fire. So as you can see, once our Amagi shoots, only then do I shoot, because I know there's very little risk of reprisal, and Amagi does kill him. And this game finally ends, which was quite a long game, but it did. Uh, I felt like this game really got to show off all the strengths of the Z52. You got to see both the Yuguma and the Gearing being absolutely crushed by that combination of Hydro and Smoke. Like, literally nothing they could do. Two very strong DDs, Yuguma with the Insane Conceal, the Gearing with the Insane Gunpower. Both of them, no chance against the Z52. And then, of course, you got to see the Torpedo Power. 14 Torpedo hits this game. Um, that kind of speaks for itself and well not exactly the easiest game either because of all the radar presence in it base xp wise uh 2.8k base xp i'll take it could have could have gotten a 3k game if i'd managed to finish off the kills but hey that was kind of my bad and as you can see we actually had a kurforst on our team actually we had two kurforst but both of them died so quickly that uh they didn't really have any actual influence on the game at all and that's kind of what i was wondering about like what the hell is are my t10s doing this game they're just dying all over the place but at least we did secure the win and detailed report was what i find pretty amusing here is well you can see of course the ap damage that i dealt mostly you want to be using ap with these guns but if you manage to land a torp and there's a friendly smoke or even your own smoke available there's nothing wrong with spamming a bunch of he and starting fires uh, you can easily get additional damage and threat on enemies by spamming he and of course if dd's angle uh, then he is much better than ap since ap will simply bounce now what i was saying what i do find amusing is of course torpedoes launched 88 I shot 88 torpedoes this game. Now that's not even the max you can launch by any means, uh, but it does give you an idea of just how many torps you'll be spamming, uh, how many torps you can be spamming each single game, and just how much of a torpedo threat this thing is, even if people tend to underestimate that aspect of the ship. Damage upon your spotting, only 30k, but it was mostly DDs, I assume, and the occasional cruiser. Over 1.1 mil 1 .1 million potential, not surprising because of all the radar, radar spotting me, I was forced to constantly dodge all the incoming garbage. And overall, a pretty damn solid game. Anyway, let's move on to my recommended build for the ship. Right, as usual, uh, I will show you the recommended build. Starting off, we have the modules. Now, there's a pretty straight up upgrade here for the torpedoes. I really dislike these kinds of upgrades because I think uh, the 10 tier 10 ship should already be the complete ship 
uh, and this isn't really one of those trade-off upgrades like you might see on carriers where you might want to use one torp or the other or one, one setup or the other on this, uh, these kind of torpedo upgrades like the Z-52 and the Grozovoy have they are straight up upgrades there's no question about it in fact um, upgrading the torps gives you faster faster speed better range and uh, there's really no trade-off you don't lose reload you don't lose detectability so there's absolutely no reason not to get this torpedo upgrade as quickly as possible so absolutely do get one uh, consumable wise priority number one is premium smoke because you have such short duration smoke you want to not just reduce the cooldown on it but you want an additional one and if you're getting premium smoke, get premium hydro as well, so you can use a hydro in sync with your smokes whenever you need them. And uh, followed by premium damage control and premium engine boost. Reminder for people who might miss it, you can click this small arrow here to make sure you pay with credits and not doubloons, because it's you don't want to be wasting doubloons on consumables. Upgrade wise, priority one is main armaments mod, turret and torpedo survivability. AA range and now the better better dispersion is pretty completely pointless in fact uh, on a DD and your AA is okay because your guns are dual purpose when I say guns are dual purpose it means the main guns work as anti-air guns as well and uh, your AA is not gonna even though the description I think the description says that these ships have uh, uh, an up-to-date AA mounts. This ship boasted very powerful AA defenses, even though the description says that this ship has very powerful AA. Uh, that's just bullshit uh, in, in the classical case. Uh, it, there, there's, there's no powerful AA. The AA is okay. Um, if you get some fighter plane or spotter plane hovering on top of you long enough, you will be able probably to shoot it down. But if a high tier carrier decides to strike you or decides to hover planes on top of you, uh, don't expect your AA to do anything besides tickle and amuse him. So the AA is really not worth investing more than just increasing the range to shoot down those planes. Faster torpedo reload for obvious reasons. Um, well, you saw exactly why. The torpedoes are kind of your bread and butter in the Z-52. And I do run the, sp the speed boost upgrade here. Um, hydro is a perfectly accept acceptable choice considering how strong the Hydro is on the Z-52. But I have, uh, I have enough speed boost to be able to use one on the Z-52 and this is a 50% upgrade. So instead of having a 2 minute speed boost, you have a 3 minute one. And ultimately, because of all the radars, all the random garbage that can spot you, uh, I find the increased maneuverability more important than I find the 20% increased hydro. Usually as well, uh, whenever you use the hydro, you use it in conjunction with your smokes. So you don't, the 20% additional duration will rarely be that useful because most of the time you just want to be using your hydro when you need it. Like I'm going to push into this gap and I'm going to get it and you need to have hydro active for the duration of that push or um, you need it. It's more about having it uh, being, you need it usually in the first 30 seconds or minute after you activate it. You rarely need it two minutes after you activated it. It's, uh, these situations are quite rare. So for this reason I ultimately prefer the engine boost over the hydroacoustic search mode. But uh, running the hydro mod is in, in no way of course a bad choice. It's a perfectly acceptable choice. Uh, both of these are excellent choices for this DD. And if you have neither, then run propulsion mod, so you lose engine less of the time and you have a faster repair on the engine. Even with last stand, losing engine does hurt your maneuverability significantly. Faster rudder shift, because, well, the rudder shift isn't good enough to get away with running the acceleration. And concealment system mod 1 for that DD concealment, which is, of course, mandatory. DD build-wise, Priority number one, preventive maintenance to increase your survivability. Followed by last stand to increase your survivability. Followed by survivability expert, once again, to increase your survivability. And concealment expert, well, increases survivability, of course, but enables you to contest those caps and really make use of that hydro in the way you want to. Once you have that basic 10-point build, you move into adrenaline rush for faster gun and torpedo reload. And torpedo armament expertise for even faster torpedo reload. Uh, followed by superintendent for more u utility and additional speed, smoke and hydro, extremely useful. And the last perk point goes into priority target. 
to know when and where you need to be dodging and how much you need to be dodging because once again this is a bit of a thicker uh, tankier so to say dd I, I don't mean tankier in the sense that it can take more damage but bigger i would say the best word is it's a bigger uh, dd which means it tends to eat a lot of ap penetrations so you want to be actively avoiding them as much as possible because as i mentioned before bbap on dds is a real problem especially for this destroyer flag wise uh, there's only really well there's two flags that i highly recommend which is of course speed flag and the anti-detonation flag. These are two hugely important tools for survivability and I do like running the November Foxtrot for faster consumable usage considering the Z-52 relies on them quite a lot when it comes to fighting or capture points. And uh, finally I just run a bun bunch of XP flags. If you want you can also run the fire chance flags, I mean it doesn't hurt. There are, there are times when you end up spamming a bunch of HE especially if you cause a flooding on a target but most of the time these free Juliet Charlie uh, Sierra Mike and November Foxtrot should be all you really need in terms of uh, survivability. Anyway, that was, that was my Z52 uh, commentary. I hope you guys enjoyed it.